Stone Fox by John Gardner. Chapter three, Searchlight. It's easy to tell when it's winter in Wyoming. There is snow on everything, the trees, the houses, the roads, the fields, and even the people, if they stay outside long enough. It's not a dirty snow. It's a clean, soft snow that rests like a blanket over the entire state. The air is clear and crisp, and the rivers are all frozen. It's fun to be outdoors and see the snowflakes float down past the brim of your hat and hear the squeak of the fresh powder under your boots. Winter in Wyoming can be the most beautiful time of the year, if you're ready for it. Little Willie was ready. He had chopped enough wood. They would not be cold. He had stocked enough food. They would not go hungry. He had asked Lester at the general store how much food grandfather had bought last year. Then he had purchased the same amount. This would be more than enough because grandfather wasn't eating very much these days. The coming of snow as early as October also meant the coming of school. But little Willie didn't mind. He liked school. However, his teacher, Miss Williams, had told grandfather once, far as I'm concerned, that boy of yours just asked too many questions. Grandfather had just laughed and said, how's he going to learn if he don't ask? <clears throat> then, later, grandfather had said to little Willie, if your teacher don't know, you ask me. If I don't know, you ask the library. If the library don't know, then you've really got yourself a good question. Grandfather had taught little Willie a lot, but now little Willie was on his own. Each morning, he would get up and make a fire. Then he would make oatmeal mush for breakfast. He ate it. Searchlight ate it. Grandfather ate it. He would feed grandfather a spoonful at a time. After breakfast, little Willie would hitch up Searchlight to the sled. It was an old wooden sled that grandfather had bought from the Indians. It was so light that little Willie could pick it up with one hand, but it was strong and sturdy. Little Willie rode on the sled standing up and Searchlight would pull him five miles across the snow-covered countryside to the schoolhouse, which was located on the outskirts of town. Searchlight loved the snow. She would wait patiently outside the schoolhouse all day long, and little Willie never missed a chance to run out between classes and play with his friend. After school, they would go into the town of Jackson and run errands. They would pick up supplies at Lester's general store, or go to the post office, or go to the bank. Little Willie had $50 in a savings account at the bank. Every month, Grandfather had deposited the money Little Willie had earned working on the farm. <clears throat> Don't thank me, Grandfather would say. You earned it. You're a good little worker, and I'm proud of you. Grandfather wanted Little Willie to go to college and become educated. All Little Willie wanted to do was grow potatoes, but he respected his grandfather enough to do whatever he said. If there were no errands to run that day, Searchlight would just pull Little Willie up and down Main Street. Little Willie loved to look at all the people, especially the city slickers, as Grandfather called them. Why, they didn't know a potato from a peanut, Grandfather said, and their hands were as pink and soft as a baby's. You couldn't miss the city slickers. They were the ones who looked as if they were going to a wedding. At a little before six each day, Little Willie would position his sled in front of the old church on Main Street. Today again, he waited, eyes glued on the big church clock that loomed high overhead. Searchlight waited, too. Ears perked up, eyes alert, legs slightly bent, ready to spring forward. Bong! At the first stroke of six, Searchlight lunged forward with such force that Little Willie was almost thrown from the sled. Straight down Main Street they went, the sled's runners barely touching the snow. They were one big blur as they turned right onto North Road, and they were almost out of town before the church clock became silent again. Go, Searchlight, go! Little Willie's voice sang out across the snowy twilight. 
and did searchlight go. She had run this race a hundred times before, and she knew the whereabouts of every fallen tree and hidden gully. This enabled her to travel at tremendous speed, even though it was getting dark and more dangerous. Little Willie sucked in the cool night air and felt the sting of the wind against his face. <clears throat> it was a race all right, a race against time, a race against themselves, a race they always won. The small building up ahead was Grandfather's farmhouse. When Searchlight saw it, she seemed to gather up every ounce of her remaining strength. She forged ahead with such speed that the sled seemed to lift up off the ground and fly. They were so exhausted when they arrived at the house that neither of them noticed the horse tied up outside. Little Willie unhitched Searchlight, and then both of them tumbled over onto their backs in the snow and stared up at the moon. Searchlight had her head and one paw on Little Willie's chest and was licking the underside of his chin. Little Willie had a hold of Searchlight's ear, and he was grinning. The owner of the horse stood on the front porch and watched them, tapping his foot impatiently. <clears throat> Chapter 4, The Reason Get over here! The voice cut through the air like the twang of a ricocheting bullet. Little Willie had never heard a voice like that before. Not on this farm. He couldn't move. But Searchlight sure could. The owner of the voice barely had time to step back into the house and close the door. Searchlight barked and snarled and jumped at the closed door. Then the door opened a crack. The man stood in the opening. He was holding a small derringer and pointing it at Searchlight. His hand was shaking. Don't shoot! Little Willie yelled as he reached out and touched Searchlight gently on the back. The barking stopped. Who are you? Name's Clifford Snyder. Stay to Wyoming, the man said with authority. He opened the door a little further. The man was dressed as if he was going to a wedding, a city slicker. He was short with a small head and a thin, droopy mustache that reminded Little Willie of the last time he'd drunk a glass of milk in a hurry. What do you want? Little Willie asked. Official business. Can't the old man inside talk? Not regular talk. We have a code. I can show you. As Little Willie reached for the door, Clifford Snyder again aimed his gun at Searchlight, who had begun to growl. Leave that thing outside, he demanded. She'll be all right if you put your gun away. No. Are you afraid of her? I'm not afraid. Dogs can always tell when someone's afraid of them. Just get in this house this minute, Clifford Snyder yelled and his face turned red. Little Willie left searchlight outside, but Clifford Snyder wouldn't put his gun away until they were all the way into grandfather's bedroom. And then he insisted that little Willie shut the door. Grandfather's eyes were wide open and fixed on the ceiling. He looked much older and much more tired than he had this morning. You're no better than other folks, Clifford Snyder began as he lit up a long, thin cigar and blew smoke toward the ceiling. And anyway, it's the law, plain and simple. Little Willie didn't say anything. He was busy combing grandfather's hair like he did every day when he got home. When he finished, he held up the mirror so grandfather could see. I'm warning you. Clifford Snyder continued, if you don't pay, we have our ways, and it's all legal, all fair and legal. You're no better than other folks. Do we owe you some money, Mr. Snyder? Little Willie asked. Taxes, son. Taxes on this farm. Your grandfather there hasn't been paying them. Little Willie was confused. Taxes? Grandfather had always paid every bill and always on time, and little Willie did the same. So what was this about taxes? Grandfather had never mentioned them before. There must be some mistake. Is it true? Little Willie asked grandfather. 
but grandfather didn't answer. Apparently, he had gotten worse during the day. He didn't move his hand or even his fingers. Ask him about the letters, piped up Clifford Snyder. What letters? Every year we send a letter, a tax bill, showing how much you owe. I've never seen one, insisted little Willie. Probably threw them out. Are you sure? began little Willie. And then he remembered the strong box. He removed the boards, then lifted the heavy box up onto the floor. He opened it and removed the papers. The papers he remembered seeing when he had looked for the money to rent the horse. Are these the letters? he asked. Clifford Snyder snatched the letters from little Willie's hand and examined them. Yep, sure are, he said. These go back over 10 years. He held up one of the letters. This here is the last one we sent. Little Willie looked at the paper. There were so many figures and columns and numbers that he couldn't make sense out of what he was looking at. How much do we owe you, Mr. Snyder? Says right here, clear as a bell. The short man jabbed his short finger at the bottom of the page. Little Willie's eyes popped open. Five hundred dollars? We owe you five hundred dollars? Clifford Snyder nodded, rocking forward onto his toes, making himself taller. And if you don't pay, he said, I figure this here farm is just about worth. You can't take our farm away. Little Willie screamed and searchlight began barking outside. Oh, yes, we can, Clifford Snyder said, smiling, exposing his yellow tobacco-stained teeth. <laughs>